Hi, my name is Santosh Kumar, and I'm a product manager with Hive. Today, I'm going to talk about Hive on Spark, and then give a quick demo. So let's get started, and let's get started from the basics, and talk about Spark for a bit. Apache Spark is quickly becoming the programmatic successor to MapReduce for data processing on Apache Hadoop. It has become one of the most popular projects in the Hadoop ecosystem, and is now supported by multiple industry vendors, ensuring status as an emerging standard. The Hive community has been steadily putting many data processing engines over to Spark. Ivan Spark is one such effort in that direction. Apache Spark is a flexible in-memory data processing for Hadoop that lends itself to easy development, flexible extensible APIs, and is suitable for steam processing as well as faster batch processing. And its last bit is what makes Hyvon Spark faster than Hyvon MapReduce, as we will see later. With that brief introduction of Spark, let me now introduce Hyvon Spark. As I said earlier, it enables Hive to use Spark as a data processing layer, providing the advantages of Spark to Hive. We have three strong reasons for doing this. Firstly, Spark has emerged as the standard among data processing frameworks available today in Hadoop. Hive on Spark further cements the Spark standing as the standard. As a result, admins have reduced need to maintain multiple such frameworks in their cluster. Secondly, with its faster batch processing capabilities, it makes Hive on Spark faster than Hive on MapReduce. Finally, it also unlocks all use cases for Hive, thereby increasing its adoption, most notably by Spark technologies themselves. Ivan Spark is an outcome of a collaborative community effort led by Cloudera and very well supported by Intel, MapR, and IBM, among others. Given the number of SQL and Hadoop technologies available, it's useful to underscore Ivan Spark's fit in this space. For we are in analytics queries, Impala will continue to be the tool of choice. Spark SQL will be the most suitable for integrating SQL queries into procedural processing. Hive on Spark, along with Hive on MapReduce, on the other hand, is most suitable for batch queries, though Hive on Spark will be much faster than Hive on MapReduce. Now to its current status. In CDH 5.7, Hive on Spark will become what we call a generally available or G, which means it's production ready and is fully supported within CDH. In this release, Hive Spark has achieved parity with Hive MapReduce with regard to functionality, compatibility, as well as integration with other components with the Cloudera's platform. So Hive MapReduce can almost seamlessly be replaced by Hive Spark. Please refer to our doc and release notes for more details. Finally, Hive Spark performs three times better than Hive MapReduce on an average. Our beta customers have reported an order of magnitude better performance on their most SLSs that they've had long running queries. This is not surprising as we have made design choices that enhance the Hive Spark's performance for such workloads. Spark exposes a lot of configuration and optimization. The good news is that most of these are taken care of by CM or Hive Spark. Hive Spark requires only two config changes. One, to set up Hive to use Spark on YARN at the CM level, and another, to enable Hive queries to run on Spark and MapReduce engines interchangeably. Second option can be configured at the service level for all queries, or can be enabled for each query individually. We strongly recommend that you enable Hive and Spark for your most complex, SLS sensitive, and long running queries first and then proceed backwards from there, eventually enabling it at the service level. At this point of time, only YARN cluster mode is supported for Hive and Spark. As I earlier alluded to, CM will take care of most of your configurations. And in case you still need to tune it further, we have published a configuration and tuning guide. Now on to its performance. As we mentioned earlier, on an average, it performs three times faster than Hive and MapReduce. There are certain workloads which are more suitable for Hive and Spark. The characteristics of such workloads are as follows. These are typically complex workloads with multiple map reviews stages. So queries having aggregations, joins, followed by group by are typically good candidates for Hive and Spark. 
disk one queries with multiple disk read and write in the intermediate phases will also be highly benefited by Hybrid Spark. Typically, this will amount to workloads that require a few minutes to hours of completion. The workloads which are less likely to be benefited by having Spark are the ones which are compute intensive and have smaller number of stages. So let's get to the demo now. For that, I'll first go to Cloudera Manager and configure Hive to run on Spark. So I log into the Cloudera Manager. Then I go to Hive. Then I go to configuration here. And then I will look for configuration parameter starting with Spark. So this is Spark on Yarn service. This will have to be turned on. This is already done here. By default, none would have been checked. However, for Ivan Spark, you'll have to check Spark on Yarn dash one option. This is already done, and therefore I'll move ahead. Now I'll go to Hue to run the queries. So I log into Hue and I go to Hive Editor. I have some queries already prepared, so I'll copy and paste them over here. This is a TPCTS query. I'll need to change to the right database. And then I will set hybrid execution dot engine is equal to Spark, which enables Hive to run on Spark here. I execute that statement. Now the underlying engine used with this Spark. And finally, I run this query. So this is started. Now I'll go to Hive Server to Web UI, which is something that we have introduced in 5.7. And this allows you to look into queries and drill down into them. As you can see here, I have launched this query. This is the query. And that's running on Spark as shown over here. So the query is running here now. Next, I'll go back to Hue and configure MR as the execution engine. So I execute this statement. Now the underlying engine is MapReduce. And again, run the same query for comparison. So this query has started. It will take slightly more than a minute to complete. Now we can see both the queries running here. The first one is running on Spark, while the second one is running on MapReduce. As you can see, the Spark query has already finished. We will wait for both the queries to finish and then drill down into them to see exactly how long each of them have taken. So now both the queries are finished and we will drill down in both of them to find out the exact execution time. So let's go also the Spark query, and then next to the MapReduce query. The drill down has got multiple tabs, space, profile, stages, query plan, and performance logging. We are interested in performance logging, so we go down and we look at the numbers. This is what the execution time looks like, which is 26 seconds. This is in milliseconds, so it's 26.374 seconds for Spark. Let's go and do the same and look up for MapReduce based query. And we see that driver are executed 74 seconds. So there is an approximately 3x improvement right now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Happy querying on Hive on Spark.